Well, hello, folks. Hello, and welcome back to another exciting episode. Well, at least I hope they're exciting. An exciting episode of In The Loop TV. I am your host, Don Grant, CTC, Cutting Tool Counselor, here with another exciting episode of In The Loop TV, sponsored by Harvey Performance Company, who just happens to be who I work for, and we really enjoy bringing this content and this information to you. If you're enjoying it, please, before we get started, just hit the subscribe button, hit the like button real quick, and share this with anybody that you think might benefit from the knowledge that we bring as a cutting tool company to you out there in YouTube land. We appreciate it, hopefully you do too. This episode, what are we gonna talk about? So this one's gonna be a follow-up. We're gonna follow up on high feed mills. We talked about them on last episode. We talked about the geometry. We talked about things that make them drive and how they're successful. I figured what we would do on this episode is maybe put them in your software and teach you a little bit more of how to program them and how to use the correct tool paths, get the most out of your high feed mills. It's gonna be fun, or at least it's gonna be fun for me. Hopefully it's fun for you. Stick around, cause we's gonna talk about it next. Well, hey everybody, thanks for coming back. I appreciate it. And thanks for watching these episodes of In The Loop TV. This one's gonna be a little bit different. This is gonna be an episode prior follow-up. Last episode, we talked about high feed mills. And if you've watched the episode, that's incredible, that's great. If you didn't, that's all right. You didn't need to do the homework before this one, but if you wanna go back and watch that, we'll put something below so you can actually watch that episode and learn a little bit more about high feed mills. Just wanna recap on two things that we're gonna talk about this one, just in case you didn't watch that. Number one is the bottom geometry on a high feed mill is a little bit different than a standard end mill. It's a couple radiuses and they're not really tangent. So programming in a CAM software can be difficult. I'm gonna show you how to do that, so stick around. Number two is there are a lot of tool paths to pick from in a CAM package, right? And uh, I don't even wanna dive into all of them, but some of them work better for a high feed mill than others. There's one I wanna really touch on, make sure you understand that, and we're gonna talk about that, and I'm actually gonna show you some examples. So, in this episode, I'm gonna show you how to program a tool so your diameters come out correctly, that's number one. Number two is, I'm gonna show you what tool paths work well, why they work well, and just give you a little experience on that because of how a high feed mill works. So, let's run to the shop and let's talk about it next. So folks, let's first talk about the CAM and how you enter your tools in CAM. Because if you're not familiar with CAM or computed aided machining, these are the master CAMs, these are the solid CAM, the Esprit, the uh, uh, Autodesk, all these other softwares that help you program to get the dimensions on your part that you want to do. So when you do that, you'll understand that the first thing you need to do in that software when you're going to machine something is identify what your tool looks like. Now, why do you need to identify what your tool looks like? This means it wants to know what your diameter is. It wants to know what your radius is. It wants to know what your stick out is before you actually pick a tool path. Why does it need to do that? Well, if you program a certain wall thickness or an outside diameter or a hole or a depth, if you don't define the tool the proper way, then your dimensions are gonna come out a little bit skewy. So what we need to do is we need to make sure we define that. Now on a high feed mill, the geometry on the bottom is a little bit tough to define because it has a couple different radiuses on that. So how do we define it? Well, let's talk about it. Let me show you how you define that tool within a CAM package. So because it has a double radius on it, you can't define it. If you take a look at this, what do you put in there for a radius? How do you define a high feed mill that looks like this? Well, what you need to know is you need to know what the theoretical radius is. What's the theoretical radius on that tool that's gonna to give you the best definition to put it in your software so you can machine properly? Now what we do and other people do as well is we give you those dimensions. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have you program this like a bull nose or a regular standard end mill with a corner radius. We're gonna give you what that theoretical corner radius is. So all you have to do is look in the book, 
find out what tool you're actually using, see what the theoretical corner radius is, and program these tools as a bull nose or a standard end mill with a corner radius. Doesn't get much easier than that, does it? Use the dimensions that are in the book. That's how you're going to define the tool. That's how, if you leave 20 thou on the wall because you want to finish, that tool with the theoretical radius is going to give you as close to that 20 thou as possible. So that's how you program it. Understood? So now let's jump into Toolpath real quick. And if anybody knows CAM software, there are several different toolpaths to use on different end mills, form tools, slotting, uh, HEM, high efficiency, traditional machining patterns, um, chamfering, and everything else. So there's a lot to choose from. So let's just say that we wanted to rough out a pocket. Let's take a look at something like this. Let's just say we want to rough that out. Now, if you're familiar with CAM software, there's something called high efficiency machining, or MasterCAM calls it dynamic milling, uh, Esprit calls it uh, uh, profit milling, uh, Autodesk has a, adaptive clearing, there's eye machining, there's a lot of softwares, there's even volume mill, don't want to leave out volume mill. Um, there's a lot of softwares that take care of the cutting tool and give you a very efficient tool path. It does not work with a high feed mill. You hear that? It does not work with a high feed mill. So I do not want you to program with a high efficiency tool path when you're using a high feed mill. Let me explain why. With a high feed mill, it's all about staying in the cut, right? The more we're in the cut, the better off we are. High feed mill works on light axial depths, right? Like a light axial depth, the deeper you go, there's more cuts on the axial, all right? So if a tool is moving a lot and there's a lot of axial depth cuts, the last thing we want to do is cut air. We want to cut material. Now a high feed, or not a high feed, but a high efficiency tool path moves around a lot. It's trying to put the tool in a really good spot so it moves around a lot. Now when you multiply a bunch of axial depths with a lot of movements, you get a lot of air cuts with a high feed mill. High feed mill doesn't care about taking care of itself in the corner, it's cutting on the bottom. It doesn't care about slowing down in the corner, it wants to get the material out. We're already taking care of all those conditions with the geometry on the bottom of the high feed mill. So this is why I don't want you to program this. And here's an example, we're taking that same pocket. I'm gonna show you this. We have the one pocket with a high efficiency tool path on the right hand side. And now I'm gonna program the same thing on the left hand side with just a traditional tool path, all right? We're gonna remove the same amount of material. I want you to check out the cycle time on both of these and see which one gets through the material a lot faster on the high feed mill. Let's take a look at it. Oh, is it done? Wow, thank, thank God for time elapsed. Hopefully you got it. You can see the huge difference in savings with a traditional path. Why is that? Again, we're not taking the air cuts. High efficiency tool paths are about taking care of the tool. We don't wanna take care of the bottom of the tool on a high feed mill. You wanna get the material out as quick as possible. So the tip I have here is make sure you use a traditional pocket path or a straight line path and let's not forget about a slotting path. One thing with a high feed mill is it likes to slot. Now your axial depth is gonna be just reduced slightly. Let's say if you're at 6% with a 65% radial step over on, on a standard pocket, in a full slot, you might wanna be at 4%, okay? You can feed it a lot faster, but slotting is a very good tool path with a high feed mill. I've seen a high feed mill go down 10, 12, 15 times D in titanium at 260 inches a minute with no issues and the bottom of the tool looks just as good as it was when it started the slot. So slotting is a very good tool path for a high feed mill, but you wanna make sure that you're traditionally programming these things in your software. Hey, quick quick question for you folks because these vlogs help me understand certain things that I have questions on. Um, if buttered toast always lands face down and cats always land on their feet, what would happen if you buttered the backside of a cat? Just 
put, put your answer below if you know the answer. Thanks. Well, hey, folks, that's it. That's how short this episode is. But I'll tell you what, we dove into some things that can help you with a camp package on a high feed mill. If there's more things you want to learn about high feed mills, please put them below. Ask any question. I'll be more than happy to answer those personally. But there's a lot of stuff on high feed mills. There's a lot of stuff on all the content we bring you. Uh, we're just trying to give you a little bit of insight. Hopefully you understand it a lot better. Listen, I want to let you know on a little insight. Please come back for the next episode. I'm going to switch it up a little bit. We're going to talk about thread mills. Thread mills, single form thread mills, multi form thread mills, tri form thread mills, where to use them, how to program it, and all of that other good stuff. So please come back, watch the next episode, watch this one, get your comments, like, subscribe, and everything else. Other than that, I want to leave you with one thing three things in life we're never going to get away from death, taxes, and spring passes. Have a great rest of your week, folks.